Wow. Um, hey, everyone. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? This is Philip Blackett here. It's been quite a while since you last heard from me. Um, that's what kind of happens when you take some time off during summer vacation. Um, this is Philip Blackett here, here the host of Life Life in the NBA. Um, it, it, it's so funny to me that, you know, it's already second year. And, um, you know, for me, it, it's... Um, I. I I have to apologize up front if I'm a little rusty. It's been about two and a half, three months since I last recorded a podcast episode of Life in the NBA. I'm really just kind of giddy all over just by the fact I'm starting season two like today. You know, so essentially um, we're only a few days away uh, from starting my EC year or my second year in business school, particularly at Harvard Business School. And for me, I'm just a mixed bag of emotions, mostly positive, mostly excited, um, anxious to get started, um, already pretty busy right now, already knowing that my schedule is going to be even busier than it has been before, uh, but nonetheless, very grateful, very excited, very much thankful and looking forward to getting started. Uh, classes actually start uh, a few days away, actually on Wednesday, and I'll talk to you more about the classes that I'm, I'm looking forward to taking this semester. But essentially, I wanted to kind of start from where we last left off. But before we do, we probably have some new listeners on board uh, listening in. You're probably asking yourself, you know, why am I listening to Life in the NBA with Philip Blackett? Like, what is it about this podcast that I should be continuing to listen to today and future episodes? Because this is our second and Sadly, our last season of Life in the NBA. It only makes sense because I'm only going to be in business school for two years. So this is my second year, my final year. After graduation, that's a wrap. Uh, that's a wrap on this podcast show. I'll probably will move on to a new, brand new podcast show um, to be determined as far as where we go from here. But essentially, why did I start this podcast show. I I tell this to a lot of people, especially this summer. I honestly have been really busy with a number of things, but among those things, I've talked to a number of prospective MBA students, a number of MBA applicants, at least over 20. Over 20 MBA prospective MBA students that are looking to go to business school that may have heard about me from from a friend, from an alum, maybe from this podcast show, uh, from a website, what have you, and reached out and want to know more about my experiences in business school, and I was more than happy to share. Um, in the process of talking to over 20 students um, this summer, uh, I, I basically reminded myself of why I did this podcast show to begin with. And if you remember from season one, I was talking more so in the sense that, you know, with me starting a whole new year, my first year in business school, uh, a number of people from home were definitely looking forward to hearing about my journey, hearing how classes were and, you know, what clubs I was joining and what cases were interesting and what was I doing like during the weekends when I had some downtime and everything like that. And I was like, geez, like I can imagine myself on a Sunday evening talking to three or four relatives or friends every like you know every time basically rehashing the same thing over and over and over again about what happened to four or five people for about three or four hours total which ultimately takes on a lot of time I definitely have learned one of the things uh, from being here in business school is that time is precious we don't have a lot of it we all have 24 hours and we're all responsible for how we use those 24 hours so I'm always 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 looking for ways to leverage my time I'm always looking for ways to maximize the time I have here whether it's the 24 hours in this day or just in my lifetime in general uh, to make the most use of what I do what I have to offer and to be able to help as many people in the process as possible possible. Um, So really, this podcast show uh, was started originally for family relatives, but I realized after the first year, there's only like one or two family relatives or friends that really ask about it beyond like, you know, seeing what I do on Facebook or, or that matter, or maybe listening to a podcast show every now and then. So it's not really about that, but it's more so for you. And what I mean by you is the prospective MBA student. The person that has reached out to me over the summertime uh, may have came across me one way or the other that is interested to learn how business school is really like beyond the admissions office, beyond the website, the the materials, the glossy brochures, the the alums that graduated 17 years ago. Um, You know, you want to learn from a current student in the trenches um, that has been through at least their first year and is about to go through their second year that can share with you, you know, on a week by week basis, not every once in a lifetime, you know, post or whatever, not not so much that, but on an ongoing week by week, almost play by play 
basis as far as how my week was uh, in business school, the good, bad, and sometimes the ugly, sometimes the really challenging parts. And, and some, to a certain degree, I'll be able to share with you that going forward into the second year. Um, so what I realized more than anything else is this show's about you. When I was in your shoes about a couple of years ago, I wanted to hear what current students had to say about their business school. And I wanted to really be there as if I was like, like literally like sitting next to them in their dorm room or literally like right across from them in the dining hall or in the library or even not too far away from them in the classroom. Um, so that's really my main reason for doing this podcast show outside of just the fact that I just enjoy being on the mic, being able to share with you my, my candid thoughts. Now, bear in mind, you know, disclaimer, definitely keep in mind, I'm only one student. And in particular, some of the things I'll share with you is about business school in general. Some of it is specific to, you know, how my life is at Harvard Business School. Um, understand this. I'm only one of only eight of over 1800 students. Um, at Harvard Business School. So for by no means should you take what I have to say as representative of the school um, because it's only just one, one per person's perspective. Um, if you wanted to get that whole sense, you probably should talk to all 1,800 plus students if you can get a hold of them. Otherwise, just take this perspective as it as it can be um, with a grain of salt if you need be or maybe something more, hopefully something more uh, for that matter. Not to mention the other thing that I want to share with you as well is you know, I, I do want to give some time, um, a quick time, uh, just to share, you know, a word from our sponsor, which is nonetheless um, my startup, Magnetic Interviewing. Uh, essentially, I started up a startup uh, right before coming up to business called, Mag called Magnetic Interviewing, which is a for profit social enterprise that helps young people, particularly college students, ace their interviews for graduate school jobs and internships. And so this season, I mean, we're practically covering um, this broadcast, this podcast show for in, in general and so I thought instead of ha having you know other advertisers on the show um, let's just have my startup in that sense just a couple of spots just to share for people that might be of interest um, to what I have to offer and then we'll just keep the show going so with that being said what I usually do on these podcast shows is essentially um, keep it to a minimum of about you know 20 minutes I, I literally get a clock um, I'm reaching for my phone right now and I go into my iPhone and then I go into my timer and I put a timer up for 20 minutes and I, once I get started I get going and then I basically share with you all that I can within 20 minutes about how my week has been beforehand and then we just kind of go from there um, the challenge with this one this episode in particular is I'm talking to you about my summer so how do I tell you about my summer in 15 20 minutes um, that's gonna be the big challenge because honestly um, this is not just any summer for me this is the best summer I've ever had in my life which is big to say, um, especially for somebody who's only been here for 30 years. But I would definitely say so. And what, for what I can tell you in the next you know, 15 to 20 minutes, we'll definitely touch base on why that is. Um, and then at, at the same time, you know, be able to kind of share with you what I'm thinking about or what I'm looking forward to this second year when it comes to business school uh, for that matter. So with that being said, I'm, I'm literally pressing the timer now. Um, we are 20 minutes into it, so um, as far as the time is concerned, 20 minutes on the clock. Um, and let's get started. So why, Philip, was this your best summer ever? Well, first of all, one of the things I did um, after exams was I just wanted to relax. Um, more than anything else, I think a lot of MBA students can, can relate to this. When it comes to finishing up business school, you're finishing up exams, the last thing you want to do is do anything academic focus after you crammed and you grinded and you worked. And, and you did your very best to basically leave it all out there uh, when it comes to your exam. So for me, what did I do? <laughs> very easily. Um, I sat in my, or I didn't sat, I actually laid in my bed and I watched numerous movies, TV series, documentaries, basically binge watching off of Netflix. I didn't really have much time to do that because I was so busy with school and, and extracurriculars and all that matter, not to mention my own startup. But now this was a point where like for the next week or two, I watched basically a number of shows that I've wanted to watch. Um, I've tried new shows I've never seen before, like Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, which honestly I did not think I was going to like, but I got put on by a friend of mine from the Harvard iLab, and I'm already looking forward to season two. Um, I've watched one of the um, one of the documentaries on the History Channel that I love so much was The Men Who Built America, which basically follows up or, or shows a more detailed context around um, people like Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, Vanderbilt, uh, Carnegie, 
Um, and what was life like when they were in business together? And, and, and why is it different from nowadays? Which to me, I'm not so much a history buff, but I am very much interested in business. Hence me being in business school. That got me interested in that to begin with. Not to mention watching numerous movies. Uh, honestly, I, I can't list them because once I get started, I probably will run out of time by the time I finish. But just keep in mind that this was what I wanted to watch. Uh, I watched TV series like Power. Uh, definitely this summer, I watched Power Season 2, Ballers. Looking forward to seeing Empire this fall along with the new season of Shark Tank. Um, basically, I don't watch a lot of TV, but the shows that I do watch, I'm pretty into. Um, so for me, that was the way I, I really kind of wound, wound down. And so afterwards, I had to essentially move out of my dorm. And I was fortunate enough to work with a friend um, where I could sublet her apartment um, on campus and basically just move my stuff over there and stayed, actually stayed on campus in Boston for the summer. And what did I do? I essentially worked on my startup. So Magnetic Interviewing, which you can find out more information at www.magneticinterviewing.com, um, this was an opportunity for me to really prepare for this next school year. We've only been in the business for a little over a year by that point. And at, that, at this point, it's really about preparing for this next school year and how we can help as many college students or young people in general as possible. So a number of things came about there that I'm very excited to talk about briefly because uh, we only got so much time. The big highlights, I would say, for me was, you know, I was fortunate enough to receive a summer uh, social enterprise initiative, summer fellowship um, from the social enterprise initiative uh, that allowed me to work at the innovation lab on Harvard Business School's campus or near Harvard Business School campus, um, where each day I just worked and worked and worked on refining my business model, trying to figure out how I can best serve the customers, how I can refine the product service offering, what opportunities are out there for me uh, to really get this going, what partnerships I could potentially uh, can build with other schools or organizations or nonprofits, and then also trying to build some press as well. Um, got mentioned in a number of different areas, a number of different sources, whether it's like Forbes.com or Monster.com uh, or other places like that, uh, LearnVest, LinkedIn, uh, really just trying to raise the profile of what we're trying to do and uh, really trying to be the go-to source for young people that are looking for help when it comes to preparing for the interviews for graduate school jobs and internships. Um, I got one more project to work on um, this weekend, I mean, for this week up until Labor Day weekend, um, which I think will really set things apart for me in a great way uh, to allow me to continue to work on this business while in school, which is one of the things that for anybody in business school, that's a challenge in and of itself. It's one thing to think about or learn about startups or entrepreneurship or think that that might be the life for you. It's a whole nother thing for you to actually commit to it, where essentially you are part student, part entrepreneur, hint student entrepreneur. Um, in addition to any other extracurriculars or obligations or commitments you have outside of the classroom, that's really on you. And so for me, a big focus was with my second year coming up, I wanted to figure out how I can better run my business in a way that does not interfere with class, but allows me to keep my schedule in balance. You know, the thing about, you know, work-life balance oftentimes, unfortunately, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a man ambassador here on campus, but unfortunately, work-life balance tends to be seen by other people um, as a, a women's only issue, in which I completely disagree. Um, because the thing is, I think everyone has work and life in their schedule. Um, and I think everyone would like to have some sort of balance as far as what they are choosing to do with their 24 hours each day that isn't so much all work or all play. Um, so for me, work-life balance definitely is an important issue for me as I get older and, and some of the priorities I have are starting to change a little bit, um, some of which came about this summer, thankfully, um, some of which I'll share with you later on in, in this um, podcast for the episode. Um, but essentially, it's, it's one of those things that for me, this is my second year in business school. I really want to make the most out of this. I want to be able to explore the city of Boston. I want to take the classes I'm really passionate about. I want to meet people that I haven't met before, get to know people that I've met before better, uh, and, and see where opportunities lay for me, both from a personal and professional standpoint. And, and the biggest thing out of that is just really being able to manage not only your time, but your priorities, and understanding that you can't do everything. 
oftentimes you're going to have to make a choice. And what I know already, some things that I did this summer are not going to get done once classes get started. Um, you know, for me, I'm not going to really get into that, but it's just it's just to illustrate the point that oftentimes you have to change with the seasons. Oftentimes, time brings about change where you have to reflect and figure out what's really important for you. Um, what should you put the time into? And as a result, what time, what things should you decrease or limit your time on or cut out altogether? So I think, you know, one of the things, one of the things you may see or hear about at least uh, in season two is essentially that, you know, what things are my priorities, you know, that weren't my priorities in year one and which ones were my priorities in year one that aren't really priorities in year two. So that's another thing too. Um, on top of that, you know, we have our startup and that's what I've been working on thus far. Uh, a big thing that I've been working on this summer is really getting the Social Enterprise Club ready uh, for this year. Social Enterprise Club is one of our biggest organizations on, on campus here at Harvard Business School, if not the largest. Uh, over 300 people in membership. Um, so my leadership team and I, we've been really just like hustling to get things ready for this start, um, whether it's with Club Fair coming up next week, uh, the kickoff we're holding with the Social Enterprise Initiative next week as well. We also banded together to essentially align ourselves to create a superhero party, which I'm very much excited about. It, it came up as an idea during a spring retreat. And, you know, instead of it just being an idea, I wanted to see if we can actually make this happen. And thankfully, the, the team was very helpful and, and very, um, you know, proactive uh, to help get this going. So, you know, in a few weeks, we actually will have a superheroes party. I will probably get dressed up as Superman. I have my Superman cape. I'm already looking at it at the clock at the at my closet door, which thankfully I received um, as part of being in Six Flags, where one of the highlights of my summer of why this was my best summer ever was I was fortunate enough to take advantage of an opportunity um, to teach 36 students, college and graduate students, all from Saudi Arabia, the vast majority of which um, were women. There were about 31 female students, five male. Um, and I was able to teach them four classes over at Harvard Law School um, dealing with personal strategic planning, uh, becoming an entrepreneur, business communications, and business management for two weeks. Uh, and that was honestly a huge reason why the summer is one of my best summers because of what I learned, not so much of what I was teaching in the classroom, but what I learned outside of the classroom for me. I, I, you know, for me, I honestly, candidly do not know a lot of people from Saudi Arabia. I have one section mate from Saudi Arabia. I like to think there's plenty more people from Saudi Arabia as well. Um, so I'm always open to learning more about different people from different cultures and different backgrounds. And going from one to 36 was definitely quite a culture shock for me, but a great one indeed for me because I learned so much about what's important for them. Uh, I got to know them outside of the classroom. We had fun. We rode roller coasters. Um, you know, we, we ate at the Cheesecake Factory. Um, I showed them my favorite place to eat around Harvard Square, which is, which is Zoe's. Um, you know, all these different things I was able to share where for me, that was definitely a highlight of why this was, was the best summer ever for me from that standpoint. Um, I, I'm trying to think as far as how I got on that tangent. Uh, oh yeah, the, 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 the Superman cape. So yeah, the Superman cape uh, for Superheroes Party coming up on September 15th. Uh, we're already planning stuff for September. We've got the retreat that we had to plan for as well. Um, a lot of stuff going on. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, but nonetheless, it's great. Now you might be saying to yourself, Philip, like, did you even take time to like enjoy or, or take a break or see family or travel a little bit? I did. I took two trips. Uh, I went to Nashville during the July 4th weekend um, to visit family uh, for, for the 4th of July holiday weekend, which was great. You know, I, I don't see my family oftentimes. Uh, my mother re really means a lot to me. So being able to see her, um, it, it, it's definitely a highlight for me. Um, and along with my aunt and, and other family members as well. Um, and then the other trip I made was over to Los Angeles for a business trip, uh, basically learning how I can further take my business to the next level, which was definitely helpful uh, from that and learn a number of different ideas and lessons and best practices that I'll be able to take advantage of and, and fully implement, right? Um, this year going forward, some of which I've already have, and there's still some things that I'm working on, including the project I'm working on this weekend. Um, so for me, this week um, really has, has come to the point where now 
you know, as I speak, you know, our first year students are getting ready for their second week of school, um, which is always kind of a fun thing to see in retrospect, because a year late, a year before I was in their position, you know, I was getting ready for lead class or getting ready for finance cases and that sort of thing. Um, and now it's, it's just different as a second year. Um, so you probably might be asking now, OK, great, Philip, you know, what classes are you planning on taking this semester? So the thing is, is that, you know, here at, at least at HBS, you know, all the classes you take during your first year are a core curriculum. Oftentimes when people think about business school, you know, that may play a factor as far as like, do they want to go to a school where they're told what to take and then they have the option of taking different classes second year? Or do they want to take classes all of their own liking as far as all electives for both years? For me, I wanted to have a core curriculum, as I talked about in season one, where essentially uh, I got a really solid foundation on business management. Uh, I don't think I would have been comfortable or confident to even teach business management uh, to my Saudi Arabian family uh, had I not gone through first year. Um, so for me, that was something where not only just that grounding, but I also knew I was going to apply that in my own startup and my own business going forward. So I really wanted to eat that spinach. I really wanted to eat that broccoli, uh, even though I wanted the apple pie or I wanted the peach cobbler. I knew I had to make sure I eat that broccoli. I may put a little cheese on it, but I still had to eat the broccoli, right? I had to learn certain classes that may not be the coolest, so to speak, you know, each to each his or her own, as far as opinion wise, or may not be the one I really, really want to take, but still I knew was instrumental and helpful for me as far as getting to where I need to go. Um, so on top of that, so now it's second year and I'm able to choose which classes I, I wanna take. Um, there's a number of classes for me that I'm very excited about taking. Um, I'll just go and list them out. Uh, first one is Strategic Marketing and Creative Industries. Um, this one is a class done by one of our rock stars here among the faculty, um, Professor Elberies, where you know she's definitely well known um, in her field, and this is a very popular class that fills up really quickly. If you don't rake it one or two, you likely won't get it. Um, so for me, I, I, I've sampled a case or two from her class. I, I basically listened to what second year students had to say, and they said, "Philip, if you really are interested in this, you got to put it at number one or number two. So I took their advice and put a number one. I'm glad I was in it. Um, so the second class I have is Authentic Leadership Development, or ALD. Um, I think one of the biggest reasons why I came to HBS was I wanted to you know, evolve to, into a more mature, more skilled uh, leader, um, not only just in the business world, but also when it comes to my family, um, also within the community. So this was a very popular, well-recommended class as well uh, for me that I should absolutely take uh, for that matter. So along with that, Dealing with entrepreneurship, of course, makes sense to take entrepreneurial finance, makes sense to take financial management, small firms. Since I'm doing a social enterprise as my startup, leading social enterprise is also helpful as well. Um, there is another class I'm taking as well, um, but it may change because I'm interested in a particular IP or independent project that deals with entrepreneurship that we'll see how it pans out. Um, because currently, you know, we've um, all the second year students, we went through this sort of like lottery type of registration type of, um, I guess, event where we selected our priorities as far as which classes we want to take. And we find out at a certain date which classes we get. And now we're at the point we're in the ad drop period where essentially we can test out the classes we got in. And then this is kind of like shopping around to see which classes we want to stay in and which ones we want to drop or add. Um, so this is kind of one of the places where we're a little more fluid on what things we take and, and going forward, where do we go from here um, from that standpoint. So um, let's see, outside of that, those are the classes. Um, I'm doing ad drop because there's a couple of classes in the springtime I want to take um, that I just missed. Um, so I'm trying to see if I can be able to get that. I'll probably keep you updated on that as season two uh, progresses from there. Um, but outside of that, I'm just kind of looking at my list real quick. I know I'm coming close on time. I got about a few mi more minutes left. Um, I, I think for me, one of the last things that came about, um, well, actually two things. Um, first is, you know, just kind of a word from our sponsor will do as well. Um, one of the things I, I almost forgot to mention about my startup was I published my first book. Uh, I published my first book called The Three B's to Asia Interview. 
Um, it's something that for me was something on my to-do list for an, quite some time. Um, and finally just got the gall to say, look, you know, this is a great time to do this. Um, understand that people learn differently. You know, some people learn best by reading. Um, why not have an, uh, something to offer people so they can learn from a book that they can take with them? So basically self-published a book, uh, listed it over at Harvard Bookstore. We sold it out the first run. Uh, we might be sold out on the second run. I have to check as well. Um, you know, if you're interested in, in checking out the book, primarily only if you live in the United States, I can ship it to you um, personally and autograph it for you if you want. Um, head over to www.myinterviewbook.com. Myinterviewbook.com. www.myinterviewbook.com. Um, it's only available for people that live in the United States. So you're probably asking yourself, Philip, uh, okay, I, I, I want to hear more about this, you know, thing that you got. Um, how can I get it um, from that standpoint? And so what I would say is here's what you can do. Um, if you live international or would like a digital copy of this book, it's essentially the same thing of what I talked about in the book. There's some modifications to it. Um, this was like the earlier version of it. Um, go to www.mi, not my, but mi, mistrategyguide.com. Um, there you'll be able to get the digital version, whether or not you live international, say like in China or Saudi Arabia or Dubai, or if you just prefer having a digital copy versus you know waiting for your book. Um, so those are two things that you know. Hey, you know. So <laughs> sponsor privilege is just kind of a, a selfless, shameless plug for that matter. Um, if people are interested to learn more about that, because this is definitely something I was proud about being able to publish my own book um, and, and being able to move forward with that as part of my startup. Uh, the last thing, um, something that happened recently, uh, and I'll go on and conclude this uh, podcast episode. Um, I met somebody special. Um, this past month in, in August. And one of the things I remember my mom telling me was, you know, when I was moving up here during my first year, she said, you know, keep your options open, Philip, because you never know what opportunities may come up. And she didn't just mean classes. She didn't just mean career. She also meant, meant like possibly meeting somebody that you connect with, um, that you could see yourself, you know, being with um, going forward. And I met somebody um you know, recently that for me um, was like the icing on the cake for me for the summer. Um, the summer was already off to a great, great deal. Uh, definitely a lot to be proud of. Uh, but I think this meeting, this meeting, this particular uh, individual, um, she definitely um, made things special this summer and really made this the best summer ever, like without a doubt, like looking even like this, this summer beat out Disney World when I was like nine or 10, you know, it, this was like Universal Studios. It, it couldn't like even, you know, it couldn't even compete. Um, so, so if she's listening uh, right now, I, I just want to let you know, I, I appreciate you. Uh, I, I'm, I thank God for meeting you the way I did this summer. Uh, hope everything continues to go well between us. And thank you for helping me have this become my best summer ever. Um, you definitely played a part, so I appreciate you for that. So with that being said, looking at the clock, we are done. Uh, 20 minutes, who would have thought it would have gone by so quickly? Um, so basically what's going on here, let me go and stop this alarm clock real quick. Um, hold on one second. Okay, so I, I turn off the alarm clock. Um, so essentially what's going on is next um, next week, um, next Sunday is going to be Labor Day weekend. We'll still come up with an episode, episode two to two of season two, uh, episode 35 of, of all the episodes, I should say. Um, and essentially, I'll talk about this. You know, it'll be the first week of classes that start on Wednesday. Uh, being able to share with you that um, we got a couple things coming up um, as far as the club fair I talked about for Social Enterprise Club, the kickoff meeting for Social Enterprise Initiative. Um, you know, the project I'm working on with my startup, uh, there's a number of things going on, um, you know, that I'll be able to share with you some more detail about. So, you know, all in all, thank you so much for listening on this podcast. I know there's a number of things that you could do with your time. Uh, so being able to take time to watch or, or listen, I should say, um, you know, how my week has been leading up to my second year of business school. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you find this helpful, uh, feel free to share this with other people, particularly those that are looking in business school as well. You can go to iTunes um, and basically look up 
Philip Blackett, Life in the NBA. Uh, you can download any episode you want. You can subscribe for free at www.lifeinthembnba.com. Um, subscribe for free and be able to access all the episodes. All of them are for free. You can listen to them at any time, anywhere you want. Download them. Listen to them while you're in the car, working out, or studying for the GMAT, whatever the case may be. I really want this to be of help to as many people as possible. Um, and like I said before, this is our last season. Uh, this is the first episode of season two. The last season, there will not be a season three because once I graduate in May, that's a wrap. So with that being said, this episode is now a wrap. Uh, take care. God bless. Continue to listen in for next week and I'll see you there. All right. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you later.